Hi, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Kelisi and this is Silver Krona Estate, my authentic Swedish 1850s farm estate. This was created for my Kelisi save file and is located in Brindleton Bay. This build took over 12 hours to complete, so I've divided this speed build into three parts. This part number two contains the main building's upper and lower floor apartments. The first part contained exterior, stables and the converted barn apartments, the two annex buildings on the left and the right of the estate. And part three is the estate gardens, the wedding venue and the landscaping. All three videos is up on my channel right now and you can find them in the description. If you want to place this estate in your own game, it's available for download in my Sims 4 gallery. My gallery ID is Khaleesi369 and there's more instructions in the description below. If you're wondering what a save file is and you're wondering how you can get my save file into your game, in the description below you'll find my website and I have a full page dedicated to my save file, all of the buildings, all of the lore, all of the families, and uh, you can learn also how to get it for your game. I also have a Discord where I share a lot of the houses, everything about my save file, and also a lot of other builds and lore and families that I create. So you're welcome to join. You can find the information on how to join the Discord in the description below. I have a system that I've created for all of my builds in my save file and most builds I do, where I have two categories of packs that I use. First I have the build and lot packs, in this um, case it's base game and cats and dogs only. And then I have game play packs that I've added, which is for rent, you can use this as a rental lot, as well as cottage living and horse ranch for the animals that I place on this estate. The thing is, the build and lot packs are the only packs that you need to, for this to be a functional build where everything is where it's supposed to be. My gameplay packs, those who are in that category, I've strategically placed so that they, when they're not there, the build is still complete. Um, so I do this to make it possible for people who have limited packs to be able to play this house and have the full experience, while people who have more um, a bigger collection of packs can get, you know, the best of uh, use of their packs. So the whole idea with this part of this estate is that this is the main house that used to be like the summer castle of this old fashioned estate. But um, what they usually do in today's society, at least here in Scandinavia, with these huge estates that are so costly to maintain and they're so big that no normal family today would want to live in them, is that they actually make them into smaller sectional apartments or houses. Um, and this is what I did with this estate. So in the main building i actually modeled this estate which i said in the first video as well well after my childhood friend's actual home so she used to live in one of these farm estates and she lived in the main building her family and then they lived in an apartment that was the lower floor of that house and it was just as, as this estate it was a the main building was a two floor um building so the upper floor was another family and then the two annex buildings or the courtyard buildings they were four different houses that people lived in that was kind of like smaller apartments and this is my thought with this, why I wanted to build this was for the rent pack because I started thinking about all of these summer castles and estates that I have around me where I grew up. Because I actually, I'm an what they call an archipelago girl, an island girl <laughs> in Stockholm. Uh, so I grew up out in the archipelago on the islands and there's a lot of these kind of uh, old um, historical buildings there and also all over Sweden. Um, and all of the ones I know of are divided into these kind of apartments. One thing was that was really interesting for me when I started building this is that I realized that I I don't really build with these styles in The Sims. I have all of these Scandinavian, Swedish, um, historical buildings as reference that I could do, but I just didn't start to do this until recently, and I've enjoyed it so immensely. Um, I even had like conversations with my mom about them because she, of course, has been in on all of these buildings, and we, we you know, it's they're very beautiful. Um, a lot of these kind of estates and like summer castles in Sweden are very light and airy in type like they have this yellow wood or sometimes yellow stone that looks so 
summery and like light. Um, and they also have a lot of white details, usually like white trims, etc. Um, and in when people remodel these, of course, they try to like maintain the original floors, the original walls, all, all that stuff, but also keep it a very light and kind of bright um, interior. And if you've seen Scandinavian interior design before, you probably recognize that kind of style of like very light and airy. And there's a reason why Scandinavians really enjoy that type of design with a lot of white walls, white furniture. It's because it's so freaking dark here in the winter. We have like six months of just pure darkness. And I mean like dark during the day as well. So I think this is, is a reaction to kind of maximize the light that we can absorb and have around us. So I think we have a lot of very light builds. You'll see here in the beginning after I kind of put down the structure of what I think that this remodeled um, estate would look like. Um, the bottom floor is made to look like it was the original build with the original like country kitchen and like big living spaces and like more formal rooms. Um, while the upper floor is supposed to be remade to be a, its own apartment. So it has more narrow corridors and it's a little bit more squished together and also have more modern kitchen, kitchen styles, etc. because it's supposed to be like an added uh, renovation to this original building. Um, I started also out with these very light walls with like wooden walls in different very uh, light greens and blues because that's also a very typical like style for old houses in Sweden um, especially that blue color you saw with the wood color we call that almogeblå which is like almoge uh, blue and it's a type of cultural color we have in a lot of clothes and artistry and stuff like that up in, in Scandinavia. Um, but I realized pretty soon, and this is a thing with doing like limited pack bills that I really realized is so interesting. I found all of these wallpapers that I never use in my regular builds that really mimic what these kind of wallpapers would look like in an original estate that had maintained their wallpaper from like the 17th hundred or like 18th hundred century. And I would say that this is kind of what it would look like with these like light blues, pinks, especially a lot of yellows and blues um, and kind of like mixed with these light wood colors. And my idea with this uh, bottom floor apartment, um, especially specifically the, the bottom floor apartment, because that one is supposed to be the owner. So in my save file, Olof Silver uh, Krona, is the person who lives in this estate and he owns it and he lives in the downstairs floor apartment of the main building and my idea is that he you know wants to maintain this old estate because he loves history and also he wants to preserve um, this historical building because it's been part of his family for uh, you know generations so he's like kept this old style and kind of maintained it to be like in a pristine condition and i have personally been to a lot of hotels that are old estates like this and they do have the original wallpapers and the original like style of interior design usually the beds are like replicas etc but a lot of the old like kind of sideboards etc are like maintained old furniture from those centuries um and that's what i wanted to kind of portray in the uh, bottom floor apartment that that would be like the original um, kind of um, living space that he just enjoys being uh, being in and and uh, uh, being very proud of like maintaining it in that like good condition that is also why the upper floor apartment it's reflected in the same style because he maintained the whole house so the upper floor apartment compared to the two apartments that are in the renovated barn on the uh, right side of the state those are very like modern and like farm house simple but the upper floor apartment is a huge apartment with like big bedrooms and that's made for like a big pretty well established family so that's going to be a more um, expensive rent while the two uh, small apartments in the farm like the barn house are going to be very like cheap apartments basically. I gotta say that this was interesting for me to do because I have mostly been 
kind of designing uh, interior wise and also like building wise, a lot of modern design houses and a lot of like black, white, gray kind of builds, um, a lot of contrast builds, um, industrial style, etc. So it was so fun for me to do a, such a historical building, but specifically a Scandinavian historical building, because I also understand that a lot of people who play The Sims have never really seen this before and don't understand how this looks different from, for example, if you see like a French old building, you know? Um, so I hope people really enjoy this. I enjoyed it so much building it. And as I said, I talked with my mom about all these things because it just brought up a lot of memories um, and a lot of like places I've, I've been at or friends have lived at or I visited, etc. And uh, I personally, the kind of um, hotels, etc. that I've been in or people who maintain furniture from these kind of centuries i so enjoy just being in those kind of buildings or just kind of experiencing that i love going to hotels like that because getting that full experience of a whole house in the same style that is well maintained is such a it's such a physical and emotional experience, especially if you're like me, are very into color, design. Um, I have a degree as a creative director, so this is like, you know, I love all that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> So I had so much fun kind of like forcing myself to go into this light Scandinavian style because as I said that's not what I naturally go for in The Sims but after this I feel like I need to build more of these kind of houses um, and before I built this one I actually built an 1850s uh, like doctor's villa it's also a type of style of uh, villa that we have in Sweden and most old villas in, in Sweden they have that kind of style it's also here in Brindleton Bay it's also so um, in my save file, so I have pictures and everything from that. And I also have, I'm going to release a video building that as well. So that's like a normal house. It's not a big estate like this. It's like a normal <laughs> one family building, uh, but it's very cute. It's down by the water in Brindleton Bay and the local uh, veterinarian family owns that building. But it's so interesting to me that um, that it would be challenging for me to build something that I'm so familiar with. But I realized when I was doing this with the limited packs that I, I don't utilize the base game enough. Like I said, I never, almost never use wallpaper. And in this build, I had to use so much wallpaper. So I started actually discovering wallpapers that I really like. Um, so it's really going to expand the way I build uh, buildings in the future, to be honest. One, two. This kitchen, for example, these mid-tone blues and browns, this mid-tone wood and the mid-tone blue uh, tiles is something I never do in The Sims, but I really liked how realistic it looked and that it felt warm um, and bright, but still really homey because it's just a mid-tone color. Um, I usually, as I said, go for like dark, moody or bright and modern um and i had so much fun also just being limited to the the cats and dogs and the base game packs because it also made me use things that i never use otherwise and actually start to appreciate them more i think it's so simple in the sims at least for me that have all the game packs and all the expansions and everything that you kind of have your go-to's that you use for like years and you put them in every single build and I realized that this save file is so much fun for me because I have to force myself to just explore the different packs. Um, that's also the reason why I made this new um, challenge for The Sims 4 that's uh, I haven't decided really on the name yet but um, that some of the like kind of <laughs> working names right now is explore the worlds or um, around the packs. I haven't decided yet but simply it's a challenge, a generational uh, rags to riches uh, challenge uh, where you have to kind of complete each pack and I started doing that challenge for myself because I simply wanted to explore the sims more and you know get not get stuck in kind of a rut that it's very like easy to do and this living room I gotta say I really loved this like formal hallway uh, kind of seating area which is also pretty typical for these kind of estates they usually have a lot of smaller formal seating areas like along the corridors where you can 
can sit down and talk or have a tea or something like that, you know? A funny thing about that is also that I, I used to collect Rococo furniture. I used to have a, literally a bright blue uh, Rococo sofa and armchair set that I used to have in my living room for years. I just recently, like maybe four years ago, um, sold all, all of my Rococo furniture and changed for a more industrial black and white modern style. And uh, it's funny now that I saw those blue couches that I didn't even realize that they look, look very similar to the set I used to own myself and like literally lived with for years. I had a big issue with Olaf, uh, Olaf's bedroom, which is this room, because I really wanted to use these patterned um, wallpapers because they really fit the, the year and the style. But I had a really hard time actually finding carpets and furniture that fit the brown and the kind of bright mint color that is in those um, wallpapers while being limited to only base game and cats and dogs. Um, but I really liked kind of I liked the challenge, I really did. And as I said, I used a lot of furniture that I've never touched before, um, but I still really like the end result and it feels really authentic to what a Scandinavian uh, build like this would look like. One, two. So this is the lower floor apartment in the main building. So this is the one where Olaf Silbekrona lives. And as you see, I gave him a guest bedroom with two beds. As he's living here by himself, I, and also that his brothers, his younger brothers that he lived with before, they have moved to some Mashuna, but they of course gonna come and um, visit him often. He kept that like room as a bedroom instead of a study, just to make sure that he has space for his brothers. So the storyline or the lore around the Silvicrona family in my save file is that Olaf, who is the oldest brother, um, he had to actually raise his two younger brothers when his dad passed away. So his dad passed away suddenly and they were left these three brothers with this enormous state and with all the taxes and all uh, the costs. Um, and literally had to make a decision if they were going to try to keep this family estate that has been in their family for generations and kind of honor their father or try to sell it and kind of, you know, start over again. One, two. Olaf was the one who loved history. He loved the family history and he loved the farm life and this country lifestyle. And he was the one who really felt the responsibility to honor his father and keep the estate alive. So he literally struggled as a young adult with two teenage um, brothers that he had to care for, as well as this massive estate and all of the responsibility that came with that. So this is kind of like the, the fruits of his labor of going through all of that. His brothers have moved out. He has kept, you know, the estate in good condition. He renovated it to make it into all of these different apartments to be able to afford to keep the house. Uh, and that's why he now lives in the bottom floor um, by himself. And the upper floor is a huge apartment that they rent out to a big family. And then the barn is two smaller apartments that they also can rent out. And the other ways that Olaf makes money is of course having his club where he offers offers gardening lessons to people where they hold those in the uh, estate garden uh, that you will see in video three. Um, I also have created for uh, Olaf and also a lot of the people in my safe file, they have a different clubs that is connected to either their personality, uh, to their trade or um, where they live. And in Olaf's case, it's connected to the estate. So the estate actually holds open gardening classes in the estate garden for people who want to join as well as these weekend activities um, that is like a weekend club where families can come to the state to meet all the animals, the dogs, the horses, the chicken, the cows, spend time with them as well as enjoy the gardens and the beach. Um, so they can come, they can play chess in the garden, they can grill, have picnics, etc., and kind of just enjoy being at this estate. And that's something that I grew up doing at estates like this, but where I grew up, um, especially 
actually one of the farms that I used to go to a lot as a kid. We used to pick corn, we used to pick strawberries there, and you kind of like weigh it by the pound, well, by kilos in Swedish. Uh, <laughs> and you would go there and they have like small restaurants and a little like local store with like all the different farms in the area can like sell their produce. Um, they also have actually specifically llamas and chickens. So you can go there, you can meet the llamas. They, they also bought very recently they bought goats too i got to see the small goats when they were there i was there last time with my mom um and they also have like backyard uh, sales and like a lot of different things that like kind of happens at this estate as well as actually um full concerts because they have a restaurant with like a an old-fashioned uh concert hall that is in a barn it's really cool actually um and in the same way with like Olaf here, that kind of estate has like struggled back and forth. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. They have to like innovate sometimes to keep the interest going, you know. So they don't uh, do the thing where you can pick corn anymore, but instead there is other activities. So I'm just imagining that like Olaf is kind of like piecing all of this together, as well as of course caring for the animals, selling milk, selling eggs, and having these like weekend, um, sales at the sales tables to like keep this farm running so he has multiple streams of different incomes that he's using to kind of like keep keep it afloat basically and that's very realistic as i said this is literally what what a lot of these kind of estates do um, they try to figure out different creative ways how to offer services that people really would enjoy so they can keep it running and keep kind of the historical profile of the building one two so this is the upper floor apartment you can see in the middle there is the entryway to the um, apartment with the blue door and you can see the staircase up from the first floor hallway so um, this apartment has actually four pretty big bedrooms and I put in one of the bedrooms that you can see at the bottom of the screen you can see that I put a crib um, and a toddler bed and I also put a bassinet in one of the other bedrooms Rooms. So I'm imagining that this is like a big, big family. It has a lot of bathrooms and a lot of space in general. Um, and I'm thinking also like to for someone to afford to be able to rent one of these historical buildings of this size, you got to have a pretty big family with multiple incomes and multiple people working. Um, the thing is, I have not made families for the actual rental places in this estate. I haven't made a family for who's going to live on the top floor. And I haven't made any uh, people to live in the renovated um, barn where there's two apartments, two apartments with single bedrooms. One is for a single person and the other one is for a couple um, or also single person. Um, but I haven't made these families. So let me know in the comments if you want me to make families for the actual rental uh, lots as well in this build. Because um, I, I, yeah, it would be fun to imagine who would want to rent this specifically what type of family that would be interested in that kind of historical building and living out because as this um lot in brindle bay is pretty remote it's down by the ocean it's like a pretty you can see if you look from the building up the kind of path to um outside the lot that you can see there's a long driveway out and there's not a lot of buildings around so this is really like literally how it will look out where i used to grow up and that's also why i chose to use burden bay as my scandinavian world because it literally looks like scandinavia and a lot of places um where i have actually lived um so i'm imagining that there's a specific person who really loves these kind of historical builds and this kind of decor that chooses to make that sacrifice to live this far out while maybe working in the city or the town. It was also funny to me when I was doing this build with all of these light wood floors that is so typical for Scandinavia. And I've had this in so many houses that I've lived in. Um, that I never use it in my builds. And it was also something that I was just thinking about constantly <laughs> while I was doing the interior decoration for this, uh, especially the main building, because I was just thinking about, this looks exactly like the, the, the floors in like that friend's house, or, oh, this is exactly the, the type of uh, floor or like the, the pastel colors that like my grandma used to have, or this, this carpet looks exactly like something my mom would have. It was, it was so fun. I was so occupied with like just the decor and just like the, the, the memory flashbacks I kept having while doing this build. 
and also my childhood friend which uh, she lived in this kind of estate that the main building is based on with these two apartments on the upper floor and the, and the lower floor she lived on the lower floor and we were like super tight we were like the two tomboy girls in the neighborhood so we were hanging out so much and like riding our bikes like all the time our mountain bikes we also both had guinea pigs of all animals and we actually used to take our guinea pigs on like trips and stuff my guinea pigs were like adventure pigs i'll tell you they've been everywhere um and we also she had a flock of guinea pigs and i had two uh, guinea pigs and then three so my guinea pig we actually took her to her house and integrated my guinea pig with her flock so my guinea pig could hang out with their flock and the alpha in the flock would like accept her um so my guinea pigs used to hang out in one of these houses and it was really cute because as it's like one floor they didn't have any stairs the guinea pigs actually was allowed to roam free in the house so they had a separate little room that was I think probably like uh, some kind of maid's room or something like way back because her house it dated back until the 1500s it burned down I think in the 700s and then one more time and then they rebuilt it so it's like it's like a haunted house you know um but uh so in the maid's quarter like next to their kitchen they made that into a guinea pig room where they had like custom built like cage and stuff it was really cool um so when we came home after school we would let them out and they will all start trotting down in like a little line and they would like walk their little path into the living room like around the walls it was really cute her house also because it was so freaking old it was also one of the most haunted experiences i've had in my life and i mean on multiple occasions i don't believe in ghosts but the house made me be a believer for a really long time <laughs> so imagine also that i was a kid when i experienced all that stuff and it was like we were terrified of it so we uh used to sleep over because she didn't want to sleep alone in her own house when her mom was away so if your mom was away i would come over and sleep over so she didn't have to be alone that's how scared she was of her own home um and literally that house it was so creaky you know it was just like everything was in wood as well so it makes a lot of noise and the doors these big old-fashioned doors the handles would go down and then they would swing open like in the middle of the night and like scare us like silly um and the radios the sound would go up and down and like there were so many things that went on in that house that just made you terrified when you were like you know 10 12 um but it was still a really beautiful place to be because as it was such an old estate the the house had a beautiful apple garden where the apple trees were so so old so they're really like kind of have nuts in them and kind of look very magical and also of course gives a lot of fruits because they're very old and established um so i really love these old houses especially the old gardens and um the castle one of the other castles that i built based this build on is the neighbor to my mom's house which is a famous um like summer castle that uh, is out in the archipelago and actually my mom's house is actually built in the castle garden so around the houses you see all of these very very old apple trees and they also have a lot of fruit and also a lot of non-native uh, plants that have grown from the castle garden and spread into the woods so that whole area has like a unique fauna that is based on the history of that castle uh, and this happens a lot in these kind of like summer castles and summer estates around like Scandinavia and Sweden this is the upper floor apartment and i had a lot of fun building these bedrooms because it also was such a different experience i based the interior style of the beds and everything based on the wallpaper because the wallpaper was the main feature of this house to really keep it historical and in these kind of builds like back in the day they would have it kind of tone in tone a lot um, so i really made each of these four bedrooms into a specific color tone one of the bedrooms 
is a, a little bit of like this uh, uh, mid-tone purple. One of them is kind of like a, a rusty peach. Another one is uh, a cool, cooler blue tone with a little bit of green in it. And then one of them is kind of almost like beige and like I would say chocolate milk because of the covers on that uh, specific bed. And it's also rooms and color combinations I've never done in The Sims, but I really found actually suitable furniture for it. So this is these kind of like sun verandas that they have in these styles from the 1850s that I really, really love and most people love in Sweden because they are, they are these bright, almost feels like greenhouse type of verandas with just all of these windows around them and you usually have these kind of light furniture on them um, and that's kind of like an indoor outdoor space to use during the winter when it's really cold um, but also a nice shaded place to be during the hot summer and in the downstairs, I actually realized in Debug that they have one of my mom's favorite plants. So the red plant that you see there is actually a Debug version of my mom's, uh, one of my mom's favorite plants that she collects and has in her garden every single year. I truly hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is Khaleesi and I hope we can hang out in the next video. It's incredibly motivating when you like, subscribe and comment and watch my videos to the very end. It really makes a difference. And now for the best part, a very satisfying montage. Enjoy. I really hope you watch the next episode where I do the garden and the landscaping because I love the cinematic things I did for video one and video two, but the garden, oof, different level, especially during the night, perfect for midsummers.